Hi, it's Shannon here from houseimprovements.com. And uh, in today's video, I just want to show you how to strip shingles off of a roof. So uh, you can kind of see I've got really the majority of the roof done already. But we've left this little patch just uh, to do a demonstration on uh, the tools to use and a little bit of the technique uh, to, to do it all up. So basically start off with, I guess, really you don't need any real special tools. Uh, you can buy one of these roofing shovels. So it's got kind of the serrated end here which grip onto the nails nicely. And it has an extra piece added on the back to give you a little bit of leverage when you're prying the shingles and you'll kind of see what that's for when I get doing it. In all honesty, this is the first time I've used a roofing shovel myself. Uh, I usually just use a square narrow shovel like this and it, it almost works just as well. Uh, this, this piece on the back does give a little bit of, of uh, extra advantage, so I guess it is worth it. Uh, it wasn't a big ticket item either, $30, $40. Uh, you'll find them at most of your local stores. So, so basically you need uh, some kind of item to uh, strip the shingles off. You're going to need a push broom or whatever to clean up. Uh, you're going to need maybe a couple garbage cans. The main thing you really need is something to haul the shingles away in. So whether you actually uh, get a dumpster delivered to your site or we're having a real windy day here right now. So sorry about the sound. Um, so you may need to get a dumpster delivered or maybe you're going to use your truck, whatever. I, I'd highly recommend a dumpster or some kind of dumping trailer just because the last thing you usually want to do at the end of the day after you've loaded all these shingles in the trailer or truck is hand bomb them all out at the landfill or your local recycler. So if you can, uh, like I said, make, make it a little easier on yourself, rent a trailer that dumps, something like that. So, okay, so there's no real, real science to this. Uh, safety wise, obviously you're gonna be working near the edge of your roof. Uh, we've set up scaffolding here more really for the purpose of uh, being able to film our series here, but uh, it, it's, it's not a bad idea just to give you a little bit of protection, at least along the eave side of your roof. Uh, if you've got a really steep roof, you're going to want fall protection, which is hooks on the roof with, a, with an actual safety harness and a retractable lanyard and everything. Um, you know, so uh, just depending on your area, your roof. I honestly wouldn't recommend this as a DIY project if your roof is any more than a 612 pitch, uh, or even if it's two stories high. Uh, most homeowners probably shouldn't be up there messing around. So, uh, so let's just get down to the project that we have in, at hand itself. So obviously, you know, we've removed a lot of this. We're worked down right down here by the eave of the roof. Um, I don't know that it really matters where you start, uh, whether you start at the top, start at the bottom, start in the middle of the roof. I, it really doesn't matter. What I like to do, if I can, I've got a trailer parked at this far end down here. Uh, that was the closest I could get to the roof, you know. So what I did is I started stripping at the far end and working my way this way. And only because then I'm not walking on what I've just stripped off where there could be nails sticking up, that sort of thing. I'm kind of walking over the existing shingles. It's a little safer. Uh, you know, that's kind of my preference. I generally like to start at the top of the roof. Again, you can start at the bottom, it really doesn't matter. So, so like I said, we've worked our way down. Basically, you're just gonna take your, whatever you're using to strip the shingles. You're gonna come down two or three rows and you're just gonna get underneath them like so. And uh, I'm gonna just throw on my safety glasses. I don't know if it's necessary, but the, the, it's more of the sun today than anything. Uh, so you're gonna get your shovel or whatever right under the shingles, kind of push up and you're just gonna pry down. That's where that little Foot on the bottom kind of comes in handy. You're just gonna keep moving up till you kind of get up to the top edge. You broke all those nails free. Slide over another foot or not even, just do the same thing. Okay, you're just gonna work your way along like that. Now, as you're doing this, you're not gonna get absolutely every nail out. A lot of them are gonna just rip out of the shingle, that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, once you get your area clear, we're gonna go back and pull those nails and clean up all that stuff. So just go along, do a bit of an air, decent size area. OK, 
okay now depending on how much room and space you have to work uh, and you know how much help you have sort of thing too if I'm by myself all I do once I get a bit of an area done I just take these shingles and just kind of stack them up a little bit just to get them out of the way and also it just makes it easier that when you get you know enough of them you want to throw them off the edge you just come over and grab an armful of them so if you kind of have them all pre-stacked up uh, it really helps okay and it just kind of gets them up out of your way too as you continue on doing the rest of the roof so i'll strip a little bit more here Now, uh, as you go along, whew, I'm out of breath. <laughs> as you go along, you're gonna come to different obstructions. You might have uh, plumbing vents like we have here, chimneys, uh, ventilation for the roof, you know, whatever might be sticking up out of the roof. So as you come along to them, just need to take a little bit of care that you don't damage it if you're gonna try to reuse it, uh, um, or, you know, in this case, break that pipe off or something like that. So. I basically, you can see, usually on a, most things, they should be set up so there's a part of it sticking out on the lower core, so this one's lead here. So I'll just kind of get under it and get it started. I think I'm going to replace this anyways, but I'll just show you, just for demo. see that there's a kind of a leading edge of nails and it should be tarred down or some kind of roofing cement as well so just kind of work your way along there till you get it started okay so we've kind of got that edge all done and I just want to work my way along back up underneath here because this this piece of lead or rubber or whatever your roof has it's gonna go up something like that underneath these upper shingles usually takes a little bit just to kind of get it all up off of there pull the shingle off so you can kind of see that flashing that's all around this piece here now I I actually have a replacement flashing to go over this that's rubber uh, this one's been used and reused it's probably original to the house from the 1950s uh, it's been looks like it's been reused every time and quite honestly these lead ones are quite good because you know you can kind of flex it up out of the way do what you got to do in most cases and, and reuse it again uh, like I said this one's just getting pretty old so I thought it might as well get changed out okay so you can see we still need to be a little bit careful because this course of shingles still goes underneath the edge of that Okay, so I'm going to uh, just kind of get this all finished up and then we'll come back and we'll just look at kind of what's left behind and uh, you know what you need to, to do to basically clean up the job. Okay, so once you have all the shingles off, you may or may not have uh, some of this felt paper, maybe even on the entire roof. So uh, in today's wind, I'm surprised it stayed here, but so we just want to peel that off. Okay, so you'd get rid of all your paper. Uh, now you're going to have... Uh, As you look back where you were, you're going to have a lot of spots like this where you've got, you know, pieces of shingles still stuck down with nails. So you can just come along with either your hammer or the, the roofing shovel and just kind of pry them out. And what usually what I do is I just work my way down the roof, going section by section, you know, taking uh, whatever width I can kind of handle because 
you know, it takes a bit of perspective to get a bit of a look and just kind of go along and pop them all out of there, and, you know, and just work along the whole roof. So then uh, once you think you've got all the nails out, just uh, take your broom, sweep the entire area. So, you know, it just kind of gathers everything up. I usually just use a little dustpan and a bucket, clean it up. Uh, some people will uh, clean it right down to their eave trough and then clean the eave trough out, which you should do, you should clean it out after you're done anyways. Uh, here we've got uh, gutter guards on so it doesn't really collect in the eave trough. So you just basically clean the area up, get rid of all your little scraps. Uh, this roof, because it's individual boards, there's lots of little nails and actually these look like they're still from maybe the time before this. You know, they've fallen down in this crack. The more of those you can kind of gather up, the less chance that when you're hammering on the new shingles, that sort of thing, and the roof is bouncing, uh, less chance of some of these coming down and, and getting underneath your new shingles and, and causing a, a hole or, or a problem, or just plain old kneeling on them. Okay, so just clean it up nice and clean. Get it all ready. This would be the time when you'd kind of inspect the sheeting or whatever's whatever's down here, the substrate, for any rot or anything that needs to be changed out. And uh, change it out so you can prepare to put your new roof on. I think, uh, I think we showed you the real basics here. It's definitely a lot easier if you've got some help, if you can gather up one or two friends and, uh, you know, a case of beer or something like that to and pizza, uh, you know, goes a long ways to keeping your buddies happy. So uh, they can maybe could come and give you a hand. If uh, if we haven't answered some of the questions that maybe you've you've thought of as you're watching this, just go to the forum and post your question there, and I'm sure to give you an answer fairly quickly. Um, if you want to keep in touch with us a little more, you can follow us on uh, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, we've got a Patreon campaign as well if you feel the need to help us out supporting us that way. A uh, bunch of different ways you can keep in touch with us, with us, not only through YouTube. So if you like what you've seen here, please click the thumbs up button. That'll help us immensely. And uh, please keep watching.